Brian from Sui Generis Brewing here, and today I'm going to show you how to take yeast from a plate or from a slant and to use it to make a yeast starter. So for this procedure, you're going to need a few items. Uh, you're going to need a Bunsen burner and alcohol lamp. You're going to need a bacteriological loop or a paper clip bent into a ring. You're going to need uh, some tubes of starter wort that's sterile. And you're going to need a source of yeast, either an agar plate or some uh, agar slants. Now for this, these tubes of wort, these are actually very simple to make. Simply make up some wort at 1040 gravity, fill the tubes about halfway, and run them through your pressure cooker or your Instapot at a high canning pressure for about 10 to 15 minutes. And that'll sterilize these completely. You will get some protein precipitate, but this is harmless. And these can then be stored pretty much indefinitely, so long as you keep those caps on nice and tight. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to take yeast from an agar plate. Uh, and place it into a tube. Now I just want to show you this tube here. I've actually shaken this for about 30 seconds in order to oxygenate the wort and it also has suspended that protein precipitate, but this is otherwise uh, the tube I showed you a few seconds ago. So to start what we want to do of course is light our lamp and the first thing we need to do is to sterilize our loop uh, and I show how to do this in the aseptic uh, methods video, but basically you want to heat the entire length of that wire in the flame to red hot and that'll be sterile. We then want to flip over a plate. Now again normally I would only work underneath the lid but so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to remove the lid completely and we're going to pick in this case one colony although it's often a good idea to pick more than one in order to show you're not grabbing a mutant. But before we pick our colony we want to make sure the loop is cool by touching it to the plate. And we pick up a single colony and we're now going to add this colony, which hopefully you can see there on the end of the loop, to our wart. So I'm going to quickly flame the opening of the tube. And then I'm going to put this all the way down into the media. And give it a shake until that colony comes off. So you can see the colony is gone now. So you can then recap. Clean off our tool. And again, give it a little bit of a shake and uh, to mix in that colony and then loosen off the cap. And that one's pretty much set. So the next thing to do is to transfer from a slant. And this is actually an even easier procedure. And hopefully you can see here in the slant, I have a lot of good growth, nice strong growth, which makes this a good slant to take our yeast from. So just like with the agar plate, the first thing we want to do is make sure that our tool is sterile by heating it to red hot in the flame. And anytime you do this, you want to heat as much of that wire at once as you can. So again, we're going to work as close to the flame as possible. And what you want to do is stick your loop in there and touch it to the agar surface uh, where there isn't yeast to cool it. Then go in and grab some yeast. Now in this case, you're not necessarily grabbing a single colony. You're just trying to grab whatever you can uh, manage to grab. And again, just like with the agar plate, we're going to inoculate that into the tube. And I forgot to pre-shake this one to oxygenate, but that's all right, because there's no reason why we just can't do that now. So once you've inoculated your tubes, the next thing to do is to make sure you get as many yeast as possible. And this is a fairly simple thing to achieve at home. What you want to do is two to three times a day, take your tube, make sure it's capped tightly, and just give it a vigorous shake. And what you're trying to do here is shake in some fresh oxygen and shake out some of the carbon dioxide. Once that's done, crack the tube so that it can breathe some more and let it sit for a few hours. And just every time you can come back and give it a shake. Within two, maybe three days, it should be completely grown and you'll have somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 40 million yeast. You can now take that tube 
and you can add it to a starter that's between 250 to about 350 mils. So that's between a cup and a cup and a half. Uh, that starter would be your standard starter, ideally on a stir plate, although you can use a shaking method if, if you don't have a stir plate. And once that starter is completed, you're roughly in the same place that you would be with a uh, tube of yeast from White Labs or with a uh, Y yeast smack pack. And you can then step that up to whatever size you need to then brew your beer. So I hope that was useful. It's a fairly short video, but it's a fairly simple procedure. And of course, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below.